What's up? Welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Holly and this is my booktube channel. I talk about books and reading and today I've got a book haul for you. I think in my last video I talked about how I'm doing kind of a book buying ban in April, which is still true. So all of these books that I'm talking about today are ones that I acquired pre-April and just haven't talked about yet. At least I hope I haven't. If I happen to mention one that I already mentioned in another video, oops, you know, <laughs> I don't think I have, but um, hopefully these are all new to you guys and let's just jump into it. And also I'm dealing with some weird lighting coming in from the window. I don't have a professional umbrella lighting set yet. I'm hoping to get one soon, but until then we're working with what we've got. It's super early in the morning. So we've got kind of a morning light coming in and with that, grab your coffee. We got a lot of books to talk about. Let's jump into it. First up, I have a book for you called Magpie Murders by Anthony Horowitz. Horowitz. This is essentially a, I want to say like a whodunit mystery kind of book. You're following a woman named Susan and she is a book editor. And one of her main clients is a man named Alan who writes crime fiction. So being his editor, right, she reads his manuscripts all the time. And she's reading his latest manuscript, and the more and more she reads it, the more it starts to sound eerily like something that's actually happened. And so it really starts freaking her out. She starts looking at Alan very differently, as you can imagine. And that's all I really know about this one. But it sounds great, sounds fascinating. And I think I picked this up at Barnes & Noble a while back. I don't really know, but it caught my interest. I'm excited to get to it. That is Magpie Murders. This next book is one I don't think I've talked about already, but um, it is Hannibal by Thomas Harris. I think maybe I've talked to y'all about Silence of the Lambs because I picked that one up not too long ago. So Hannibal is part of the Silence of the Lambs uh, is it a trilogy? I think it's a trilogy. I've already read the book called Red Dragon. I don't know if this is number two or three or if Silence of the Lambs comes before this one. I'd have to look that up, but let me know if you know. Leave me a comment below. Um, essentially, it's about Hannibal Lecter. I think everyone's probably heard about him, so this is a series I definitely want to finish and I'm excited to get to it. So. There you have it, that's Hannibal by Thomas Harris. Next up, I have three different nonfiction true crime books. The first one is Helter Skelter by Vincent Bugliosi, Bugliosi? I'm not sure how to pronounce his name, but I believe he was one of the attorneys in the Manson trials. So this book is about Charles Manson and I take it it's from the perspective of one of the attorneys that was involved in his trials. So that sounds exciting. I'm excited to get to it. I'm pretty sure this has been out for a long time and has sold millions of copies. So it's a pretty popular one. Some of y'all may have read it. Let me know if you liked it. That is Helter Skelter. Next up, I have a book called who Killed These Girls? The Unsolved Murders That Rocked a Texas Town by Beverly Lowry. The reason I picked this up is because I was watching a documentary not too long ago about this very case. Um, and I think the main person being interviewed was Beverly, the woman who wrote this book. I think these were some murders that occurred in the early 90s here in Texas and it took like forever for them to be solved. I'm pretty sure they were eventually solved. It's been a minute since I've seen the documentary but um, this book tracks that same story and I enjoyed the documentary so I'm sure I'll enjoy the book. That is Who Killed These Girls by Beverly Lowry. Next up is a book called Mind Hunter. That's Chief. I don't know if y'all have met him yet, but he's been hanging out with me this morning. He's kind of mad because I took his squeak ball away because it was driving me crazy trying to film. So he's a little, you know, he's pouting. <laughs> but anyway, this is Mindhunter, Inside the FBI's Elite Serial Crime Unit by John Douglas. So John Douglas was actually in the FBI for a long time, and he was the inspiration behind the character in Silence of the Lambs. What was his name? Let me see if the back says. It does. Jack Crawford. He was the inspiration for Jack Crawford in Silence of the Lambs because he has interviewed and studied 
a bunch of serial killers and assassins, including Charles Manson, Ted Bundy, and Ed Gein. Gein? I forget how you say his name, but I think he is the one that would dress himself in his victim's peeled skin. Ew! Like, ugh, that just makes me like shudder to think about, but that is just crazy. Can you imagine interviewing a man that has skinned his victims and then worn the skin? Like, what is your first question to a person like that? I can't even imagine. So I'm really excited to read this book and get his take on everything. And I think this might be the book that my true crime book club that I'm in is reading in May. So I'm looking forward to reading this next month. I'm excited. That is Mind Hunter by John Douglas. Next up is a book I picked up simply because I haven't read it yet, and that is Frankenstein by Mary Shelley. I mean, first of all, look at this cover. Look at that. Can y'all see that? I mean, how cool is that cover? But, I mean, I don't know how I can call myself a horror fan if I haven't read some of the classics. So, I'm gonna try to get to this this year, and I think everyone's probably heard of the story of Victor Frankenstein and the monster that he creates. Um, but yeah, there you have it. That is Frankenstein by Mary Shelley. This next book is called Mirrorland by Carol Johnstone. Johnston? Johnstone? I'm not really sure how you pronounce that. But essentially, it seems like it centers around twin sisters. There's Cat and Elle. And Elle has disappeared, but Cat, I guess kind of being her twin, gets this feeling that like she's not dead, that Elle is not dead. That otherwise, if she was dead, Kat would know. She feels like she'd get a feeling about it. So Kat decides that in order to try to find her sister and figure out what happened to her, she needs to go back to their childhood home, and the back says, confront the horrors that wait there. She says a lot of things are coming back to her now, all the things that she sort of buried in her psyche, and all the secrets she's been running from, and it says the closer she comes to the truth, the closer to danger she is. So I'm not really sure how this is gonna go. I don't know if it's gonna be like a, a haunted house story or really what direction this is gonna go in, but it looked really good and I'm excited to get to it. That is Mirrorland by Carol Johnstone. Next up, I have a book called Snap by Belinda Bauer. I think I've seen this one on Bookstagram quite a bit, but I'll admit I don't know a ton about it. Essentially, the back is pretty brief, so I'll read it. It says, snap decisions can be dangerous. It was nearly an hour since the car had coughed and spluttered and jerked and rolled to a crunchy halt on the hard shoulder of the southbound MF motorway, or M5 motorway. That made it over half an hour since their mother had left them there to walk to an emergency phone. Stay in the car. I won't be long. That's all it says. That's all I know. Um, <laughs> it just sounds interesting. It's enough of um, a description to keep me interested. And it says one quick decision could be her last. So I've heard good things about it on Bookstagram. Can't wait to get to it. That is Snap by Belinda Bauer. Next up, this is another one that I have absolutely seen made its rounds and I still don't know much about it is The Burning Girls by C.J. Tudor. I think a lot of people have read this, and I'll admit I don't know how it was received. I think I've heard good things about it, as far as I know. So essentially the back says that 500 years ago, eight martyrs were burned, 30 years ago, two teenagers vanished, and two months ago, a vicar died mysteriously. So that's interesting. You've got stuff happening 500 years ago and stuff happening two months ago. I'm not sure, maybe they're all linked in some way. And I guess your main characters are a reverend named Jack Brooks and his teenage daughter. They've moved to a new place, they've gotten a new home, a new job, and apparently there's some stuff that starts going down. Jack is obviously a reverend and he gets freaked out by the fact that the last vicar killed himself and his daughter Flo has visions of burning girls and someone is sending them threatening messages. I don't know what's gonna happen, but that the back description is pretty vague and maybe it's more fun to keep it that way so you can go in blind and enjoy the ride. But there you have it. That is The Burning Girls by C.J. Tudor. Next up, I have a book called The Children of Red Peak by Craig DeLuey. DeLuey? 
<laughs> hope I have that right. Um, this one I think I picked up on Pango Books. I think I saw it at random and thought it sounded really good. The back says that there are three people, David, Deacon, and Beth, and they all live with some sort of dark secret. They grew up in a really isolated religious community in the shadow of the mountain of Red Peak. So apparently they are among the very few people that survived the horrific last days of this community. This book takes place years after that, and apparently the trauma of what they went through is still affecting them, and there's another survivor, not one of the three of them, but another survivor that commits suicide. And so when that happens, they reunite to try to confront what happened and deal with it in some way, but apparently it says that trying to dig into the past and discover some truths might put them on a path back to Red Peak, and it says that escaping a second time could be almost impossible. So that sounds interesting. Kind of sounds like it has cult elements maybe, which I love a good cult story, so I have no doubt I'll probably enjoy this one. That is The Children of Red Peak. Next up, I have a book called Universal Harvester by John Darnell. I think is how you pronounce it. This one, I can't remember where I heard about this one, but I had never heard about it before. I've never seen it on Bookstagram or Booktube to my knowledge, but it's kind of a quick read, but it looks really good anyway. So apparently this takes place in the late 90s. I love a good 90s story. I'm a 90s kid, so I love books that are set in the 90s. So you're following the main character named Jeremy. He works at a video hut in Iowa. Apparently, he lives with his dad, but his mom died like six years ago in a car wreck. And he's working at this video store when one of the local school teachers comes in and returns her copy of a movie called Targets. And all she says to him is, there's something on it and leaves the store and doesn't explain any further. And then two days later, another customer comes in with another tape and says the same thing. There's another movie on this tape. Essentially, the back says that in this town, it's kind of like a really rural town. It's in Iowa. It says the fields and farmhouses become sinister, imbued with loss and instability and foreboding, and that Jeremy and everybody around him gets absorbed into the tapes. They become part of another story, one that unfolds years into the past and years into the future. And it's part of an impossible search for something someone once lost that they would do anything to regain. I don't know what that last little part means or what I'm getting into, but it sounds fascinating, kind of a rural, maybe horror type of book, and it's set in the 90s. You've got a classic video store like Blockbuster. Did y'all used to go to Blockbuster? That was my haunt every Friday night. So in any event, I'm excited to get to Universal Harvester. Next up, I picked up a book that I've been curious about for quite some time, and it finally came out in paperback, which I prefer paperback, so I've been waiting for quite a while, and that is The Four Winds by Kristen Hanna. Kristen Hanna is one of my absolute favorite authors. I love her. I think she was a former attorney, and she's a fantastic writer. I loved all her other books that I've read by her. I haven't read all of them yet, but um, I've loved a lot of her books, and this one looks really good. Essentially, it's set in Texas in the 1920s, so this is around the time of the Dust Bowl. The story centers around Elsa. She is apparently too old to marry. I guess at this time there was like an age where if you didn't get married by that point, you were kind of, you know, SOL. But it says one night she decides to change the direction of her life and she basically marries a man she doesn't even know named Rafe Martinelli. And then in 1934, okay, so this starts out in 1921. The Dust Bowl hasn't happened yet. So it's not until 1934 when the Dust Bowl happens and it says millions are out of work. Drought has devastated the Great Plains. Farmers are fighting to keep their land. Crops are failing. Water dries up. And the dust storms are everywhere. If you've never heard of the dust storms, Google it. It was pretty horrific. And the way this impacts Elsa is apparently everything on her farm with her husband is dying, including her marriage, it says. So every day is a desperate battle, and she's got children by this point. So 
Essentially, she has to make a choice, the back says, to fight for the land she loves or leave it behind and go west to California in search of a better life. And if I know Kristen Hanna, it's always more complex than that. There's always so much depth to her stories. So I can't wait to get into this one. It looks really good. That is The Four Winds by Kristen Hanna. And last, but certainly not least, I got my hands on Till Death Do Us Port by Kate Lansing. This is her most recent book in her Killer Chardonnay series. Well, I shouldn't call it that. It's the Colorado Wine Mystery Series. Killer Chardonnay was simply the first book in the series, which y'all have probably heard me talk about before. And this is book number four. So I'm still working my way through the series to get caught up, but I didn't want to pass up a chance to get this because it is actually a signed copy which I am so excited about. You can see there, she said, Holly, cheers, Kate Lansing. So I am excited to have a personal autographed copy by Kate Lansing. I don't wanna to go too much into what it's about because if you haven't read the others in the series, it kind of gives away stuff that happens in them. So um, just know that it's part of her Colorado Wine Mystery series. It's the latest and I'm excited to get to it. That is Till Death Do Us Port by Kate Lansing. Well, those are all the books that I have hauled recently. Sadly, I won't be hauling any in April. It's taking an enormous amount of self-restraint and I've already goofed once, but it's gonna be my one and only. The goof was book of the month. I just, because it's one of those renewing subscriptions, it just auto-drafted and I didn't even think about canceling it and so I thought well you know the money's already spent might as well pick a book right so I've got my April book of the month coming in and I'll probably share that at some point but so far that's been my only slip up and hopefully it's the last <laughs> so we're gonna do good in April we're gonna save some money we're gonna read what's on our shelves because obviously I have a lot I haven't read because I'm doing a book haul so <laughs> Let me know what books you all have hauled and if you've read any of these. Did you like them? What'd you think of them? Until I see y'all in my next video, have an awesome week and I'll see you later. Bye y'all.